Okay, today we're going to be looking at uh, creating a basic timer like a stopwatch in Bash. So let's just go ahead and start. Uh, let's create a variable that's going to hold our time in it. So we'll say uh, let and putting let uh, before a variable is just one of a few different ways uh, to let the uh, script know, uh, your shell know that this is an integer. It's a number that we can add to and subtract from. And we'll just call it x and we'll say x equals zero. And then we're going to want a loop. So we'll say while one, which means go continuously until I stop it. We're going to say echo dollar sign x. Then we'll sleep for one second. And then we'll clear the screen. Well, let's not even do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll clear the screen. Um, and then we will say let x plus plus mean adding one to x each time. Done. And there we go. And that is how you create a basic timer uh, stopwatch type application in Bash. Thank you for watching. And just kidding. We're going to go a little more in depth than that. We're going to uh, actually probably go over, uh, this probably, it sounds something simple, but there's a lot of issues with what we just did and a lot of improvements we can make. And so there's actually probably going to be two or three videos on this topic. Um, but yes, what I just did works. You have a timer, although fairly ugly and inaccurate. Uh, and the reason I say inaccurate is, let's go ahead and just uh, take what we just created, this little one-liner, and I will make, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. Again, use whatever text editor you prefer. Uh, I'm going to open that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my shebang line. So always start off your script with shebang line. We'll say bin bash. So we're saying this is a bash script. Use the bash interpreter. Uh, and then we will paste in, not that, that's the name of this video. <laughs> Wrong clipboard. There we go. Okay. Let's break this down on the different lines so that uh, make it a little bit easier to see what we have going on. So one of the biggest issues with what we just did that makes it very inaccurate is that here we're, we're doing a loop, we're running a command, printing something to the screen, we're sleeping for one second, then clearing the screen, then adding to the number that we started with. And the problem is, even though we're sleeping for one second here, these other commands take time to run. And even if it's a small amount, think of, think of it, let's say it's a hundredth of a second. It takes a hundredth, a hundredth of a second for all three of those other commands to run. Um, that means every minute and a half, your timer is going to be close to a second off. And that's if everything runs smoothly. If your computer runs slow or something like that, it's going to be completely off. Um, so we need to come up with a better solution for getting our seconds. And the best way to do that is to use your system time because there's on, on, on most computers, there's going to be a fairly accurate clock on there, for, at least for, you know, most common uses. And if what we do is if we get the time that we're starting at, we can always subtract the current time from that if we're getting both in seconds. So that way, we can then update our display every second, but if the computer runs slow or other things, it's still, I mean, the com whole computer could freeze for five minutes. Once it starts going again, it's gonna start showing accurate time again. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, up here, instead of X, let's also give this a better name. Let's just call it our start time. And we're gonna put dollar sign parentheses here. And I also like to put things in quotation marks whenever possible. I'm going to run the date command. So again, the dollar sign parentheses is saying we're running command and we're going to take the output of that command and put it into the variable, uh, in this case, start time. Date will give us our date, but if we do plus percent s, what it's going to give us is, let me go out to my shell here and I'll say date plus percent s. It's going to give us this number here when I'm running this. If I run it again, you can see it's different because what this is giving us is what's called uh, a Unix timecode or epoch. And what it is, is it's the number of seconds since midnight or the first second of the day, um, 1970, I believe. Uh, so January 1st, 1970. Uh, and <clears throat> most of the time when you're doing programming, this is how you're gonna wanna store times. It's easily converted to other formats. Uh, there's no um, uh, time zones there, so you can always calculate that later on. No matter what time zone I'm in, this is going to be the same uh, number until I convert it to another time format, and your computer should know what time zone you're in, or you can tell it what time zone it is. 
but this type of timestamp is very, very important. And it also allows you to easily do math because you're just counting in seconds where uh, if you're trying to do minutes, seconds, days, they're all different lengths of time, right? And we'll get more into that in either the next video or the video after that. Go ahead, clear the screen, go back in our script. So now we have, whenever we start the script, that is going to run and set our current time uh, in seconds to this variable. And it is a number because we said let. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and update our variable here. We'll say start time, whoops. So we're printing start time, but actually we don't want to print that. We want to set that to a variable. So we're gonna say let, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let current time, so every time this loops, we're gonna get another Unix timestamp. So we're gonna again say date plus percent S. So this is getting a time when the script starts. Boom, we got that, that's locked in. That's not gonna change unless we kill our script and start it over again. But every time this loops, it's going to get the current time in seconds. Now what we need to do is take that current time and subtract it from uh, the start time. So what we're going to do, or subtract the start time from the current time. Let, and we'll call this just seconds, equals, and we're gonna say uh, dollar sign current time minus dollar sign start time. So now we have seconds and we don't need that quotation mark there. And then we'll sleep and then we will do our echo dollar, time, dollar sign seconds. And we don't need this. So this is our base code. We're gonna add a few more things here in the end. Uh, and actually, let's go ahead and put this before we sleep. Otherwise, we're going to have a blank screen for a few for one second at the beginning of our code. So again, the script starts. We get the current timestamp. Then it continues to loop forever until we break it. And what it's going to do is every time it loops, it's going to check the current time in seconds, then subtract uh, the start time from the current time and give us those seconds. And then we will output that to the screen and then wait one second. So again, we're sleeping one second here just uh, so we're not just constantly displaying to the screen because we're only looking at seconds here. So we only need to update once every second. But even if our computer ran slow and it took to, you know, 1.1 seconds or like, again, if the whole computer froze and ran slow for 10 minutes, once it started running again, it would start displaying the, the correct time. So I think we've got everything we needed right there. Let's go ahead and make that executable with change mod plus X and our name of our script. You only have to do that once. And now we run our script and there we go. So again, it seems very much like what we had before, uh, except for it's a lot more accurate, especially as time goes on. And it would only take a couple of minutes for our old way to get, you know, a second or two out of sync, which makes it is a big deal. You know, for a lot of stuff, if you're, you know, microseconds out of sync here and there, it's not a big deal. You know, obviously there's sometimes you need very accurate time. Um, but uh, this is a lot more accurate. Again, if you're getting a second out of sync every minute and a half, you know, then by the end of an hour, you're going to be close to a minute off. That That's a big difference. Control C to get out of that. Now, you notice I cleared out the... Um, the clear screen. So at one point I had it where it was clearing the screen so it wasn't displaying down like that. We're gonna do something a little different here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say NE. And then what we're going to do after that is inside our quotations here at the beginning of the line, we're gonna say uh, backslash R. So what are we doing here? Um, the N is saying, don't print a new line at the end of the seconds here. And the E is saying, hey, look for this, this special character here. And what that's saying is basically go back to the beginning of this line. So it's printing a line. Uh, it's going to the beginning of the line and printing the line. And the next time it loops, it's going to go back to the beginning of that same line. Uh, so now we can run that script and you can see it's printing it there. And the difference between that is we're not clearing the whole screen every time. So what we can do is we can come back here and at the beginning we can say, uh, echo, we can say maybe something, welcome to my timer. 
And then down here, instead of just seconds, we can say time, something like that. And then we will run our script. You can see it didn't clear the screen. We can have it clear the screen at the beginning of the script. I like doing that. Uh, but now it's updating. It's not clearing the screen each time because maybe you don't want to clear the screen each time. It's just reprinting that one line over and over again. It's erasing it. And actually, it's backing up and then writing over it, backing up, writing over it. Um, so that's where I'm going to stop today. In the next video, we're going to go a little more in depth with this. So uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There should be a link in the description. As always, you can go there and search through all my videos from both my channels. And uh, if you like my videos, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com where you get early access to videos and uh, other cool stuff. I do thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.